What is up my friends? You are very welcome along to our Manchester United preview here on Anfield Agenda. It feels like we just finished taking care of Sheffield United and already here we are having to do this video ahead of the game on Sunday. That just shows you the games are coming thick and fast now and it's going to be very tricky for managers to make sure that they keep their squad fresh and available for these big games. Taking Kerry United on Sunday is massive. We need to get those three points to give us that momentum going into the last seven days. And most importantly, to keep us top of the league table. So what I'm going to do over the next few minutes is give you guys my score prediction, my starting 11 prediction and some injury updates ahead of the game. Asking you to let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As you can see in the bottom corner there, there is a QR code that will bring you to our tickets on Ticketmaster the Dublin and Belfast shows went on sale this morning so hope to see you guys there Belfast May 31st Dublin June the 2nd can't wait honestly can't wait nervous but can't wait to come and meet some of you guys in person so let's get stuck into this preview from our side of it regarding injuries no new concerns that I'm aware of the game will come a little bit too soon for Alison Becker Diogo Jota uh, and Trent Alexander-Arnold but Curtis Jones as we've seen return to action last night Ibrahim Akanade looks like he will have recovered from that knock on his knee to be able to take to the pitch on Sunday. And with Toro Endo, it was just a precaution last night. He had a little bit of a knock, but Jurgen just wanted to rest him up and make sure that he was available and good to go for United at the weekend. On the other side of it, for Manchester United, well, they've got far bigger injury concerns than us right now, particularly in defence. It looks like it's going to have to be Harry Maguire and an academy product that start for Manchester United in defence. They have injuries to Rafael Varane, injuries to Lissandro Martinez, injuries to Johnny Evans, Malassia, uh, Luke Shaw. It just keeps going and going for Manchester United. But we all know we still have to go there and get the job done. And I feel like we owe them one this season. We drew with them at Anfield in a game that is very not, very uh, easy to forget from our perspective. Obviously, we went there and we had that crazy FA Cup game that United came out on the better end of. So, Verge has already been rallying the troops and we have to leave Old Trafford with these three points. So, all that being said, the watch along will be starting on Sunday from half past two. It's a half past three kickoff, so hopefully you can join us for that. But for now, let's start off with the score prediction ahead of this game. And this is what I've gone for. I'm predicting a 4-2 win for Liverpool. I think the game's going to have goals in it. Maybe this is just uh, optimi optimism for me, but I think we're going to come out on the right end of a crazy game. So four goals to two is what I'm predicting. Don't get me wrong now. I'd much rather a 2-0 clean sheet victory, but I just get the feeling it isn't going to be one of those days. It has a, it has the, all the, the hallmarks of a crazy Premier League game. We've seen United's game with Chelsea last night. United somehow found a way to lose it, being 3-2 up going into stop stoppage time actually I should make that a little bit worse for them going into the 98th minute of stoppage time United were leading the game but found a way to lose a 4-3 we can't really be you know throwing any uh, doubts at them because we did similarly at Old Trafford so we got to put that right so that's my score prediction now into the starting 11 prediction we'll start as always as we do with the goalkeeper and the centre backs I don't think there's going to be any surprises for you guys here Quivy and Kelleher between the sticks and Ibrahim Akanade and Virgil van Dijk for the centre back pairings one thing a lot of people have been talking about with regards to Van Dyke and Canada is Canada needs to stop getting so touch tight to people. He gives away a lot of needless uh, free kicks around the edge of the penalty area or when teams are trying to counter attack. Just take a half step back and I think it would give him a little bit more room to manoeuvre. Forwards are very clever these days to feel any touch they're going to the ground and some referees are only too happy to give them and we know that we're not great aerially defensively these days so... If we can keep those free kicks to a minimum and don't start the game slowly, I think we should be in good shape there. In the fullback positions, uh, I have made some changes there, so this is what I've gone for. Obviously, Connor Bradley, I believe, will be the starting right back as Trent is still not available. On the left side, I was really impressed with the cameo off the bench from Andy Robertson last night. His assist for Cody Gakpo was absolutely sensational, as was Gakpo's finish. So it's surely got to be Andy Robertson for this one. He'll know what this game means. He'll have every... Um, toolbox tool in his toolbox to uh, make sure that we manage the game and we have to start it quick we cannot do what we did against Brighton we cannot do what we did last night against Sheffield United and give up early opportunities and encourage the opposition so that's the back five that I'm going with Kelleher in goal Bradley Robbo Van Dijk and Canade into midfield 
I think this is where some of you will disagree with me, but I'm going to explain my thinking. So, with Toro Endo in the number six, I think we're all okay with that one. Alexis McAllister ahead, again, I think you're still with me. But I'd go for Harvey Elliott. If Curtis Jones is available to start and play the game, I've no problems with Curtis Jones playing. Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott, to me, either one or both of those two on the pitch, and I'm happy. So I'm going to say I'm going to go for Elliott in this one, mainly because I feel he deserves the opportunity. And Dominic Soboslai has he's been a little bit inconsistent as of late. The quality of the player, the quality of the dude is, is unquestionable. But he hasn't been performing consistently. And in this game, consistency will be key. We can't be giving the balls away. And I think Harvey Elliott's um, possession stats are pretty impressive. He doesn't give away the ball much. And he works really, really hard for the team. Picks up pockets of spaces. And I think him and Alexis could do some damage uh, in front of that United back four. So for me, with Toro Endo in midfield, uh, Alexis McAllister and Harvey Elliott in the two advanced positions. But as I mentioned, no problems with Curtis Jones is in there whatsoever. So next up, we get to the front three. And again, not really many surprises here, my friends. I've gone for Mohamed Salah on the right-hand side and Lucho on the left. Now look, Lots of different guesses as to why maybe Mo's form has been a bit up and down. Some people speaking about the fact he's observing Ramadan and, fa Ramadan and fasting. Uh, other people talking about the fact that maybe he's just tired or fatigued coming back from injury. Either way, I'm still back in Mo to deliver. He loves the goal against Manchester United. Manchester United's defence is usually terrified when Mo shows up. So for me, Mo has to start this game. I actually thought that he took the substitution last night pretty well. You know, some people were trying to make something of it that he barely acknowledged Klopp on the way off. But for me, his celebration when McAllister scored that goal was everything I needed to see. So I don't think there's any issues there with Mo. So he'll be on the right-hand side of attack for me and Lucho on the left. A little word on Lucho, actually. He's been really good recently. Loved his work rate. He's adding some goals to his game as well. If he can keep those performance levels up till the end of the season, I think we won't be too far off lifting that Premier League title. And and lastly, my friends, through the centre, no real surprises here. It is, of course, going to be Mr. Darwin Nunes. Cody Gakpo did really, really well last night when he came off the bench. That goal wasn't an easy goal to finish, but he pointed to Robbo where he wanted it. Robbo put it on a sixpence and Gakpo buried it. And it's good to see some people giving him some props for that. It was lovely to hear Alexis McAllister talking about him as well and saying that uh, we need to get behind the lad. I look at him as our fifth choice striker. So I maybe view him a little bit differently to others who hold people to higher standards. And again, I'm not saying you're right or wrong, but this is all about opinions, isn't it? So for me, that is my 11. Kelleher in goal, Bradley at right back, Robbo at left back with Ibrahim Akanade and Virgil van Dijk as your centre-backs, with Toro Endo, uh, Harvey Elliott and Alexis McAllister in midfield with Mohamed Salah, Darwin Nunes and Lucho Diaz up top. Also going for a 4-2 victory. That's my lot. Over to you guys now. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. We will be live tonight if you're watching this on Friday early at half past eight. Look forward to catching up with you then. And remember, tickets from Ticketmaster, QR code in the bottom of the screen and there's a link in the description. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely weekend. It has officially started. Much love.